أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بفضل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد صلي على محمد طب القلوب ودوائها ونور أبصارها وعلى أهل بيته الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم وهو أصدق القائلين وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وجعلني مباركا أينما كنت آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات اللهم صل على محمد For the love of Bibi Zainab, with the loudest of our voices, sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. First of all, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gracing us with this moment and this opportunity tonight to celebrate the birth anniversary of Bibi Zainab alayhi salam Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad My felicitation goes to the Imam of our time and secondly felicitation goes to our great scholars our maraji those who give service and khidma to this beautiful school of thought of ours and thirdly felicitation to each and every one of you Respected brothers and sisters, lovers and followers of Ahl al-Bayt on this auspicious occasion. The verse I've just quoted from Glorious Quran is quite a long verse, but I've chosen to quote only a bit part of the verse, which is from Quran 19 verse 31, Surah to Maryam. Where Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala discusses the personality of Prophet Isa alayhi salam. Now departing from this verse of Surah to Maryam, our topic of discussion will be Sayyida Zainab alayhi salam, an epitome of a blessing or of blessing. And our examination is to look at ways and means of becoming Mubarak in one's life. When Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala in this verse is saying, وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا meaning he made Isa alayhi salam a blessed personality. A personality who is blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we're going to look at what does it mean to be called someone who is blessed, who is a Mubarak. And then we will look at the traces of blessings in the life of Bibi Zainab alayhi salam. And then lastly, we will conclude by looking at what do I do to become a blessed person in my life. So, number one, the question is who is Mubarak? Because every single person wants to become Mubarak. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, when he discusses the personality of Prophet Isa, after saying, Inni Abdullah, my servant of Allah, and then he said, Waja'alani Mubarakan Aina Makunt. Allah made me Mubarak wherever I am. Now the question is, what does it mean to be Mubarak? Mubarak as Mufassirin and scholars define it simply means when a person becomes an affair in nas, when you become beneficial to people, 
you are regarded as someone who is blessed. Some scholars said when we talk of a Mubarak, it's someone who's got what is called Nama or Numu. He progresses in his life. Once there is a progress in your life, be it political life, be it spiritual life, be it social life, you are regarded as someone who is Mubarak. But if there is no progress in a person's life, then a person may not be called Mubarak. And based on this, scholars categorize people into four when it comes to becoming Mubarak. And here, I humbly request your attention. Let us look at these four divisions of people when it comes to the question of being Mubarak or blessed in your life. Because every single person, whether good or bad, want to be blessed in his life. And to be blessed, we said, simply means when you sit around people or people sit around you, they find benefits. Hence, you realize very well, in a very beautiful tradition of our beloved first Imam, which is a very known tradition, Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen mentioned, live amongst people in such a way that when you are absent, they yearn and crave your presence. And when you are gone out of this world, they remember, lament, and cry for you. So therefore, to become Mubarak is to be beneficial to people around you. Not when people sit around you or you get to where people are, they all want to run away from you. Now, the first division of people when it comes to the question of being Mubarak, these are people, they are not blessing to themselves, let alone being blessing to others. There are people like that. There is no progress in their life whatsoever. Be it economically, be it financially, be it spiritually, be it educationally or academically, there are people, individually, they are not blessing to themselves. And if you are not blessing to yourself, you cannot expect to be blessing to others. That's number one. The second division of people, they are people who are blessing to themselves, but they are not blessing to others. They benefit themselves. They have the knowledge. They have the wealth. They have the status. But at the end of it all, they are selfish. Here, you are Mubarak to yourself, but you are not Mubarak to others. The third group of people, they are those people, they are blessing to themselves, and at the same time, they are blessing to others. But their blessing to others is a limited blessing. Whereby you find sometimes in our communities, a person will serve humanity up, a, up to a certain period of time. And all of a sudden, he get tired, or he get demotivated, or he get discouraged, and stay away. And he doesn't want to do anything with people. Yes, you are Mubarak to yourself and to people, but at a very limited time or period of time. And there are those, they are not just Mubarak to themselves and people in this world. Even after their departure from this world, they are blessing to people. And the likes of them is Sayyida Zainab alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And no doubt, before we even look at the life of Bibi Zainab alayhi salam, and the traces of blessings in the life of this great personality, I and you, we also have the opportunity if you truly want to be blessing to people even after our death. You can be a blessing. You know, what stops I and you sometimes from thinking of becoming blessing to people after our death is lack of ikhlas and sincerity. In most cases, we do things for people to praise us. In most cases, when we are not praised, 
we feel very bad. In most cases, when we are not recognized, we feel very bad. Your scholars come forward and say, each and every individual has two major forms of existence. Your physical one, and you have what they call extended one or recognized one. The physical one is the 50 years given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to live here 50 years? Or for argument's sake, 80 years. For argument's sake, 100 years. This is important. But the extended life is more important than this one. Extended life is that this 50 years given to you by Allah, what have you achieved out of it spiritually, academically, socially, financially? Some of us, economically, very good, but very poor spiritually. Some of us, socially, good status, spiritually, zero. And I and you know very well, today, all over our communities in the world, the major issue and challenge that we face is spirituality and Islamic education. And that is where I and you need to go and strive. Because if you go to spirituality and Islamic education, it will extend your life to Barza. And after your departure from this world, people will continue to benefit from your blessings. And as Ulama mentioned, you know, when sun shines every morning, it shines on everything, buildings, people. But this sun which shines, sometimes can be a blessing to some, and it can be something else to others. Some are able to use sun as a source or a means of energy. Some now, the same thing applies to Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wa salam. Ahlul Bayt, they are blessing for us, not only in this dunya. Even after their departure from this dunya, they are blessing. But it takes a person to realize the blessings of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam in their life of this dunya and after the departure of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Now let us look at the traces of the blessings from the life of Bibi Zainab alayhi salam. Bibi Zainab she was blessed when she was alive. And her blessing will continue. And you as a lover and follower of B.B. Zainab. When such a night is here. To celebrate the life of B.B. Zainab. You need to ask yourselves question. What is the essence of this celebration? Why do we go for this Hosh Ali? Why do we have to celebrate? Is it just to go to the mosque? The lecture is good, and that is the la. The essence of celebrating the lives of Ahlul Bayt is to be able to take at least a lesson from the lives of Ahlul Bayt. Wallahi, if we as she as of Amir al muminin or she as of Bibi Zainab, we are determined to seriously learn from Ahlul Bayt. Wallahi, no one will stand us when it comes to knowledge and ma'rifa. How many majalis do we have every year? Is it Khoshali just to go and go out? No! Not, brothers and sisters, each and every majlis that you attend will become a proof either against you or for you on the day of Qiyamah. So tonight, I want us to go out from here Learning at least one lesson of how to become blessing to myself and to people and becoming blessing to people not only when I am alive but when I depart from this world people will continue to benefit from my blessing. Have you forgotten that narration from Amir al muminin Where Amir al muminin said, in this dunya, you meet so many people. But the people that you meet are of two kinds. Some are lessons for you and some are blessings for you. We don't want to become lessons. We want to become blessings. We want people to sit around us. We don't want people to get tired of sitting around us. Quality of a Shia of Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam is that when you are with people, they want to stay more and more with you. 
Now look at the first trace of blessing in the life of P.B. Sainab. And I want you to pay attention to this line. And as to why Zainab alayhi salam is indeed a blessing. Zainab her aim in life was to please Allah and no one else. You know, if you are for Allah, you will find Allah and you will find people. But if you are for people, you will find people and you may lose Allah. Zainab alayhi salam in each and every step of her life she made Allah central and pivotal. Even at difficult moments Allah was criteria for Zainab. His pleasure was everything for her. Hence, she is a blessing to all of us. Where do we get this from? I'm sure those of you have read about the life of Bibi Zainab. Our scholars, this is not a name given to her by Rasulullah or Imam Amir or Bibi Fatima. Scholars call Zainab Akila to Talibin. The intellectual who is a seeker of Allah. Zainab, very intellectual. And she wasn't just an intellectual, she's a seeker of Allah. Today, unfortunately, when you have some intellectuals in our communities, they tend to think even Allah's message is backward. Zainab, intellectual. And she sorted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some said, Akila to Talibin fi meharab al ishq. Zainab, number one, intellectual. Number two, seeker of Allah. Number three, she was forever in the meharab of the love of Allah. Hence, scholars mention, when have you known Zainab and she wasn't in a state of ibadah? Her entire life, she was in a state of a ibadah. And because of that, today I and you can be proud of mentioning Zainab. Number one trace of a blessing was when Bibi Fatima left this world. Bibi Fatima was a source of comfort to the house of Amir al Mumini. Bibi Fatima was a means of tranquility in the house of Amir al Mumini. When BB left this world, how old was Sayyidah Zainab? Five, six, according to some rewire. Amir al muminin got married to Umm al-Bani. But narration says the one who replaced BB Fatima alayhi salam was the young Zainab alayhi salam. Zainab was a blessing to her father. And not even Zainab, you know the narrations where the Holy Prophet taught us when Allah blesses us with daughters, what do you do? We have to give them a unique, special attention. Because a daughter comes with a rizq from Allah. If this is ordinary daughter, what of Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam? You remember that narration which says, a daughter is a rahmah and a son is a ni'mah. And the narration went on to say, when Allah blesses a person, a common narration, with three daughters, and you bring them up according to Islam, Jannah. One narration says, La, if you are blessed with one, and you look after her, it's Jannah. But my point is here, every daughter is a blessing in her house. So therefore, Sayyidah Zainab, alayhi salam, she filled in the place of Bibi Fatima, alayhi salam. Number two, trace. I just want, please follow these traces. There is a point I want to deduce at the end. Second trace of blessing in the life of Bibi Zainab. You know, when Amir al-Mu'minin was in Kufa, as usual, many people would have come to consult Imam Amir al-Mu'minin. One moment, Mawlai Kainat was out of the house. He came back, he found so many women, they were sitting, Zainab in the middle, she was teaching them Tafsir al-Quran. Amir al muminin look at the beloved daughter. Zainab said, of course, what do you expect from the daughter of Amir al muminin 
Now the point I'm trying to say is a blessing teaching people. But today, when you look at some of our community members or women, their Islamic education is not up to standard. Sometimes we don't give importance to the education of our girls. I'm not talking of secular. Secular there's been a lot of progress. I'm now talking about Islamic education. And the challenges that we face today in our communities is not only for boys. Girls also equally face challenge. How many lady scholars do we have in our communities? Can some of them stand learn, be encouraged to become representatives of Sayyidah Zainab In most cases, unfortunately, you find our lady scholars, they are self-taught. They are self-taught. And upon all the effort, they are not respected in our communities. Zainab salam was a blessing in Kufa because she was teaching people Quran and Akhlaqul Hayat, the ethics of life. And it is important that we encourage our daughters, we encourage our mothers. Alhamdulillah, and Dar Salaam, you have a house for the ladies. This is the one of his kind. We don't have it anywhere. But this is the way. Because woman is everything. Sometimes we tend to forget. They spend more time with our children. Rasulullah said, if you educate one woman, you know that, and it is said out there also. It's like you have educated the entire nation. But who today design a good program for our women to study? How many of our women are going to Hausa and study? Those who have come back from Hausa, they have nothing to do. It is so important we learn from Sayyida Zainab alayhi salam. And I personally believe the challenge of the next time or going forward this world, we need strong women scholars within our communities to represent Bibi Zainab and Bibi Fatima alayhi salam. Or else we will be failing in our duty to prepare the grounds for the reappearance of the awaited Savior. Number three. Zainab blessing when it comes to material. Which Alhamdulillah we are doing well. You all know the narration. When Bibi Zainab alayhi salam, they were captured or they were put in prison so called. In Sham, food will come to them because the children were not having enough. Say the Zainab will give to children and she would stay alone. That is the blessing of Sayyida Zainab. The blessing of sacrifice. To such an extent, Sayyida Zainab will say, Allah, if this is what you want for us to gain your pleasure, take more from us and expose us to more pains. So Zainab, salam, in terms of material, she was a blessing. She gave out unconditional. And not only that, Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam when it comes to the narration of the riwayat of Ahl al-Bayt she was above Wallahi. Khutbah of Fadak of Bibi Fatima who reported Sayyidah Zainab this Khutbah of Fadak which has about 20 verses of Quran from Bibi Fatima and the secret of worship of Allah is from who? from Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam Sayyidah Zainab narrated that Khutbah and today, we are able to benefit from that khutbah. Now, question, brothers and sisters. How do I become blessed? And this goes to even those who are getting married tonight. We are in a different world. The challenges of today's world is unique. And we're going to face more challenges going forward. But what is important is to position ourselves strategically. Sometimes we tend to pay attention to secondary things at the expense of primary things. How do I become blessed to my wife? How do I become blessed to my husband? How do I become blessed to the entire Tanzania? Wallah. How do I become blessed to my community? This is very, very important. Easier said than done. We need to get out of polemics to the field of practice. Number one, as a Shia, wherever you are, at any cost, keep good akhlaq. Wherever you are, 
keep good akhlaq muraatul akhlaq it's simple it's not a big deal but it's difficult to achieve if you want to be blessing to people your number one identity as a Shia of Amir al muminin and the lover of Sayyida Zainab, wherever you are, represent your community with your akhlaq. When you open your mouth to speak, let a blessing comes out of the mouth. Whoever you interact with, leave a mark, good mark with the person. You meet Sunnis, good akhlaq. You meet Christians, good akhlaq. And this is where I want to invite you all passionately. When it comes to interfaith and intrafaith, you have to do more. Alhamdulillah, we are blessed with this very big community in Darussalam. We need to do more of interfaith and intrafaith. And mind you, brothers and sisters, interfaith and intrafaith doesn't mean you sacrifice your faith as a Shia. It means no. You as a Shia, you as a Christian, what are the common grounds that we can come together and bring about progress in Tanzania? This is what Ahl al-Bayt did. Today, look at wherever Ahl al-Bayt are buried. It's not only spiritual benefit, even material benefit. That country, that city is benefiting from the presence of Ahl al-Bayt. Sham! Sham! Wallahi, I am convinced Syria is going to come back to normal because of the presence of Sayyidat Zainab alayhi salam. Wallahi, I am convinced. People will try, but the presence of Ahl al-Bayt will not allow that to happen. That is the blessing of Ahl al-Bayt. And one thing which is really I need to indicate, I learned it from Mombasa. On the question of keeping good akhlaq wherever you are, especially our youth. Wherever you are, keep good akhlaq. Wallah. You become on the side of Muslim, fine. But keep good akhlaq. You know what is that akhlaq I learned from Mombasa just three days ago? It's the akhlaq of not paying the loans we take. Amanat. Fathers, mothers, Brothers, wallahi, one of the feature of a good mu'min is that he has a man, he's trustworthy. When you take a loan, I learned this from Mombasa. People take loan from Afed, whatever they don't pay. And they are professionals today. Haram! It's a wrong akhlaq. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala comes in Quran. لا تأكلوا أموالكم بينكم بالباطل إلا أن تكون تجارة أن تراد منكم. Do not eat wealth of each other in a wrong way, except that it's a transaction or business that you have agreed upon. Allah said, whoever does that, أدوانا وظلما فسوف نسليه نارا. Whoever does that, you eat the money. أدوانا and Zulman.